Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back, yeah. Run it up, then run it back, yeah. yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. Friday, we have made awesome. it. Ooh, that sounded fun. Why, what was why, that? Why did that do? I'm <laughs> spinning. You sound <laughs> like a, a robot. It's gonna be a day. Lou doesn't have a phone. <laughs> Lou doesn't have a phone. Shams is perfect. And this yeah. is Stadium Insider. Shams, Sharania, Michelle, Chandler, Lou. Um, we've got a basketball game to react to. Thought it was gonna be fun for a minute. And then it took a weird turn. Pacers, Celtics, game two. They're up, of course, two nothing. 126-110 uh, final. First game two win in these here playoffs, y'all. Brown, <laughs> 40 points, five rebounds. Tatum finished with 23, six and five. Siakam had 28 and Halliburton finished with 10 and then left the game in the third with a hamstring situation. We'll get to that. Um, but this was the day after Jalen Brown was snubbed from making any all NBA team, and then he gets 40. So I'm not going to say it's a coincidence. I'm going to say that's legit. Yeah, and we talked about this yesterday. If there was one person that probably got snubbed the most, it's him. You can't be the second best, arguably the first best, on a lot of nights and not be rewarded for one of these teams. And it's just like, obviously, he's fine financially. He's got one of the bigger deals in the NBA. But yes, the fact he that he's now not eligible for a super max when he does deserve to be on one of these teams, it's tough, and he came out last night, and he clearly looked motivated, and, and he was aggressive, he was physical, he got to his spots, and this is the type of Jalen Brown that the Celtics need because it doesn't just have to be Jason. They don't have to. They don't have to do this back and forth. When it's both of them, and they're both being aggressive, you can't guard. You can't guard them. There's different coverages. They can post up. They can get out in transition. So this version of Jalen Brown makes the Celtics even that much better. <sighs> they pissed him off, Lou. Okay, so then here's the problem, right? And I don't know if this will ever happen, but. Do we need to change the voting process? Do we need to? Well, just to be clear, he, he got his Supermax last summer. But I'm saying, he like, He wasn't as far eligible as for just... anymore. Oh, he wasn't was one it. of the guys that, that was it. it. wasn't like a Halliburton. Halliburton was, 40. Anthony Edwards was. Do you think was, that's why they it. didn't vote him on an All-Star? Jamal Murray was, Darren Fox was. Got it, got were, it, got it. Do you think um, the media thought that and thought, well, we could help someone else out? Well, I mean, there's no way. Stupid. Yeah, that like, doesn't look yeah, like I mean, basketball or you count my money. Yeah. That makes yeah. Look crazy. yeah, I shouldn't yeah, that's know. That's not fair. Like, that, that, that shouldn't be I that think way you either. make the best decision. You know, I, I assume most media, I think the large majority of the media does try to make the best decision that they have in their mind. You think so? <laughs> some, I mean, some probably don't, but I'm just You're saying just I feel like most do. Questions. Most do. They might do be you wrong. Not? Well, do you yeah, not think so? Well, I mean, when this Sabonis guy, if that stuff comes out, it's like clearly that guy's not just honestly voting for the best guy for the, that team. He's this is a this is bias. This is, is for like so like again, and, yeah. and that one's so obvious. He got caught because it does, his votes didn't even make sense. But there's got to be more of that somewhere else with other voters. There, it's all it's all public. Like you can put it all. I mean, I know what Kendrick yeah. voted. Like everybody. Yeah, like kind Kendrick of, not putting Brandon it. Miller on on. Uh, uh, all rookie, like that's some sort of animosity he has towards him. So there is a fine line of how honest, how real are these votes, and how I, accurate are they? I just think we're, I think we're human. I think the system is flawed. I don't think you get the players involved because half of the players are going to vote um, favorably to their Good peers. Point. Half of them not going to vote at all. That's just the reality of it. If you're on vacation right now and you're on the Detroit Pistons or one of those <laughs> teams, I don't care who's the MVP. I don't care who's the defensive player of the year. I don't care who's eligible for a super max and who needs to be on. I don't care. I'm, I'm on my personal time. That's where it gets tricky with the players. Where it gets tricky with the media is you take somebody like Chandler and myself, for example, if I'm saying SGA is the MVP all year, He's saying Jokic is the MVP all year. We both want to sound like we're smart. We both want to yeah. sound like we understand what's going on. So we're going to do whatever it takes for the circumstances to fit our narratives. And I think that's where it gets tricky with the media. Like the gentleman that voted, voted, voted Sabonis <laughs> for everything. He probably said something preseason that was favorable to Sabonis, and he wanted to make sure his take looked like it was an accurate take. And that's where I think this system is broken. And then as a player, too, like I remember when you we had to vote for like these awards. I would, I would just, or you didn't do it, or you just voted for your voted teammates. For your, for your like, teammates. Like, or, your, or your boys, like, yeah. or like, yeah, or yourself. So it's like, how how do we get a real What about accurate, executives or coaches or assistants? I like, feel what? like that makes more sense. But again, they're also biased. They're biased towards who their yeah. guys. They're biased to guys that they might want possibly in free agency later. So, and then with players, too, like, can you imagine, like, like Draymond Green, he's not going to vote for like Rudy Gobert or Nurkic. He doesn't like them. So like, there's Great there's point. these personal relationships too that affect the actual real votes. The Jalen Brown one though is, 
Like the Lakers had blowing. two players. This one is and just, this one doesn't make sense. This one he makes deserves no sense. it more than a lot of those people on the list. I mean, I was excited because I figured that he was going to have a crazy game last night and it totally came true, but it just, that's not, that shouldn't happen to quote unquote motivate a 40 point game. He should be on at least one of these teams. And I don't, I don't really get it. Um, his mindset, however, he did share some thoughts after this one uh, and after the snub. Here he is. Was there any uh, motivation for you um, after hearing that you didn't make an All-NBA team? No, I want to say that. What would you say? <laughs> I mean, we two games from the from the finals, so you know, honestly, I don't got the time to give a. Well, to be fair, he did make it last year, and he ended up getting the Super Bowl. Wait, so the year the that he didn't get it Dang is the no, year that. But he's he's, uh, he's obviously upset, and yeah. he should be. Like the Boston it's... Celtics have been one of the best teams all. They've been the best team all year, and for whatever yeah. reason, we're still trying to find something wrong with this Boston Celtics team, and they're only doing everything that they're supposed to be doing. But it's they're not up. just they're the best. He's also a lot of the times the best player on yeah, the best they're, team. they're ten and two. They're nine and two in the postseason like, now. Ten and two in the postseason at this point. Makes like, sense. and we're still trying to say, well, they're boring. They're not doing this and they're not doing that. And a lot of that, he deserves credit for the way that this team is playing. So for for these voters to completely overlook that, like, what is the message that we're sending? Is, what is this it. about? Is it about numbers? Because again, a lot of these guys that are on these teams didn't have successful years when it came to their teams. So when you're all NBA team, for me, that should translate to winning. And you said that it doesn't translate um, when you're a rookie. Well, when does it translate? Because at this point, it's all over the place. Yeah. Does winning matter anymore? Yeah, this it has to matter. The lady said, what, what would you what say? What would you <laughs> say? As a follow-up <laughs> from the back yeah, row, it's, it's incredible. I mean, uh, fair. Yeah, I get, and also, like, at the end of the day, he did get his super max already. He's already paid, but this is a respect thing. This is, you want to be seen. You want to be heard, like, and, and he deserves that. So he knows he got stuff. He also knows there is a bigger picture. There's, he's <laughs> playing for a championship. At the end of the day, who cares if you were third-team All-NBA or not? Like, at the, at the end, but... He's respond. He's mature enough. He's he's you know he's old enough to know there's <laughs> something bigger than me. this. Yeah, but clearly, when you say me. I don't give a fuck, <laughs> you give a fuck. Sorry for two fuck bombs. Got, that, that's three. The, that's what are you one. doing? Yeah, what but, are you doing? Shams, I, I agree with them. You can <laughs> give somebody all the money in the world, but you still want to be recognized uh, for what you do out there. And so yeah, his yeah. mindset one is one of the what? best players in the game. Yeah, like, yeah, come yeah. on. I, I remember when he signed his Supermax contract, five years, $304 million, and the whole sentiment around the league uh, was surprised, right? When you think about uh, from the public perception, is Jalen Brown the highest paid player, player in NBA history? And I remember the conversations he had with the Celtics was, I don't just want this contract and be the same player, just improve incrementally. I want to take multiple more steps. I want to be the best player in the world. Like, that's his goal. That's what he, he really strives to be every single day. So he didn't just sign the contract and say, I'm just going to rest on this. Um, he told the Celtics, my best days are ahead. Obviously, they believed in him. They gave him that contract. And he won't say it, but of course he feels like he's one of the top 15 players in the NBA. When you think about Team USA, if, they, if there is going to be a need for a re replacement, you, you want to look at a guy like Jalen Brown because he's earned that as being one of the best players in the league. I mean, he's statistically been their best player in this That's series. What I'm saying. Arguably one of the best players in the playoffs in general, uh, especially for the Celtics. And to me, another factor is the, the aspect of him and Jason Tatum, how they coexist. They're not hugging each other after every game like Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic do. But the amount of mutual respect right. there is between those two players, I, I did an interview with Jalen Brown last year, and what he told me is, like, I want him to do well. He wants me to do well. That understanding is all those two need. So do you huh. think he's capping? Is he capping? Um, is that <laughs> I think he's I think he's capping about the part where he doesn't care. I, I think he's I think he's visibly upset. He also showed poise. He also showed that you know I'm still locked in on the goal. This is a team game, but at the end of the day, y'all got me messed up. Is there a world in which he one day wakes up and goes, "I'm sick and tired of playing second field to dude who I think I'm better than"? No. Uh, no, because they're gonna they're winning at an elite level and they're going to the finals. They're going to these kind of, like they're playing deep into the postseason every single mm. year. So a lot of guys think the grass is always greener. Let me go be the guy, and it's hard when the We've when the it. scouting report then shifts to you and you're the focus and you're getting blitzed and you're getting double teamed. The best defender is guarding you, not Jason Tatum. It 
it's way harder. So I think they have a perfect thing going on together. They're winning at an elite level. If they happen to get a championship this year, it's only going to get bigger. And what he's if he's the MVP of the final? Great. I, I think I would hope Jason Tatum would be happy for him because he has carried the load already this season. He's been great. And the Boston Celtics would not be where they are without Jalen Brown. And the whole money thing is funny. Like he's the highest paid player right now until the TV deal goes up. Then he's not going to be know. next year. Then he's not. There's. A, I, I was the most overpaid player in the NBA, making 15 million a year. That's like a seventh, eighth man that's, now. Like it's that's you're pennies poor now. now. So every it's that's going to keep going up. So it's like talk about his contract yeah. now. That's going to be nothing in five years. I remember in which the is crazy because it's a lot of bread. It's so in the 2021-22 season, re, re, media was asking Jason Tatum, "Do you still want to play with Jalen Brown? Do you still want to be teammates with him?" And I think that was a point where there was a lot of conversation. Can these two guys win? Can they get to the finals? Can they win a championship together? And Jason Tatum publicly said, I want him here. I want to play with him. We know what we've done. Conference finals, like every single, every year, or every other year. And, but even privately, he told the Celtics, he told people around that organization, I want Jalen Brown here. And those are turning point moments, right? That could have went either way. He stuck by his guy. Jalen Brown obviously loves playing with Jason Tatum, and now they're on the cusp of another you, finals. You know what it is, too? You don't see them, like, out in public or on vacations together like you did with LeBron and D-Way, like Clay and Steph, like Mahomes and Travis. Like, you, you, those are like a do it. You don't really see these two hanging, so I think the world just spins this that they're not homies. It's like, no, we don't know they what just, they're they doing. They feel you know colder than Yeah, but we don't know what they're doing yeah, on the way. Well, they might have different lives, like totally different I'll, open, yeah. I'll open the curtain up. They absolutely do hang out. And I've, I've been a person that's been with them on several occasions, but they're both very private men, mm. right? They don't live these lives where cameras are following them everywhere. They're very private men. They're private about their, their personal lives. They're private about their families. They're private about how they move. I've seen them on a number of occasions hanging out being friends. I mean, I appreciate There's that. There's a scoop right there. Yeah, that's... There's a scoop. Wait, <laughs> so pull beep, beep, the curtain beep, beep. back a little bit. I appreciate that. Like, but I like that because most be. people think that they're just they just go to the facility, they practice, <laughs> their teammates, they're really good at basketball, and then they leave. That's not the case. But you see after the game, like Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving hugging, hugging each other, and everyone talks but about that. A lot that. of times, that's also just like fluff. Like these two guys. You see Donovan Florida, Mitchell. You see Donovan Mitchell Florida. cheering for Darius Garland. The guy's trying to get him traded, but like it's 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 all it's it could be fake. That's cold, actually. That that's I will a say. <laughs> like, when, when they get to the finals, I think, and if they win it all, if they do win it all, then I feel like we'll be able to appreciate just this run that they've been on. These two. Guys don't know anything else besides getting to the conference. That's finals. when you'll get your hug. That's <laughs> when you get out public. If they don't hug, <laughs> then then I got real questions. Then we're no, really they, gonna I'm with sure this. they will be in a long, long embrace if they win the championship. This yeah, year. stay together. You guys are. We're talking about them every year as the best duo, top three duo. Like, don't like keep it going. You guys are in your prime for the next three, five, six. Like, the only thing that changes that conversation is they don't win a championship this year. If they don't win the championship this year, then we're the floodgates open to say, oh, they hate each other. They should go this way, go that way. Well, also because there's gonna be a lot of body language analyzed in a finals that they don't win. Can you? Imagine we're the salary year. aspect is another one as well. Like, J Jason Tatum is up for a mm -hmm. massive new Supermax extension this summer. They're gonna have to. They already p paid you Hade. Derek White's gonna get his money eventually. Kristaps Porzingis already is under contract. So you pay all of this money if you're winning. You're competing at a high level. You, like if they're getting bounced in the first, second round, we're not talking about this duo staying together. Yeah, well, we talk the championship. They have no problem. Yeah, and we, the luxury talk we talk about the best core, the best starting five is the Boston Celtics. Pay all of them. It's clearly it's working. Pay them. Pay them. Uh, look, this was uh, it was a weird game, right? They got down early. It, it felt very close for most of it. They did end up winning by 16, um, and they are, as we mentioned time and time again, they've had the best record all year. But do they feel when you look at them? Because we've had years past where you look at a team and you go, God, they're just head and shoulders above everybody else. Do they feel like that to you? Do yeah. You they have all year long. I think the Nuggets were their biggest threat, and now that they're out, I think they are just straight up the heavy, heavy favorite. And Minnesota's been great. Dallas has been great. That series is going to be unbelievable. Now with the Halliburton injury and the Pacers, there's not a way in hell that they're not getting to the, the, no. the finals. So, But, yeah, they've been dominant. They defend. Their depth hasn't been an issue because the three guys that do come off the bench are productive. When Jalen Brown's playing like this and Drew Holiday's defending, and then you have the best role player, Derek White, and... Porzingis is coming back. They're doing this all without their, what, third yeah. best player? So, yeah, Bro, I think they are just fine. For three series, we've been trying to pick this team apart. They don't have killer instincts, this and that. What else do you want? They're 10-2 in the two playoffs. Games. 
they, they've lost twice in these playoffs. That's killer instinct to me. If it's because it's not flashy, because they don't have a lot of close games. The, the one close game that they did have, they walked it down and won in, in overtime. Yeah. That shows killer instinct to me. That shows poise. That, that shows me that they're locked in and that they can win close games. I don't know what else we want from this Boston Celtics team. They're doing everything they can. Sure, it's not flashy. Sure, it's not loud. Sure, they're not giving us sound bites after the games and things that we can talk about and be entertained by. But they're kicking everybody's ass. What else do we want from them? I think also people are saying, oh, well, Jimmy Butler was hurt. Donovan Mitchell was hurt. Like, it's they would still beat them if, if they were healthy. So it doesn't we'll matter. Never you can't, know that, that's why we? I almost hate Halliburton's out now because they were going to win the series regardless. Now they might be a lot quicker than we thought. But, like, <laughs> the Boston Celtics are for real. They do it all. They have two absolute studs. They have two two unbelievable role players, and they're getting their best shooter, pick and pop Porzingis back any day now. So they, they mm. to me, if I had to pick right now, they're, I don't care who comes out of the West. I Boston do. Celtics are winning the championship. If you go up 3-0, do you bring Porzingis back? Maybe for like 20 minutes just to get Some his legs cardio. before the finals, <laughs> yeah. I, if he's ready to play, I would throw him in now. Play him 15 minutes, because you can't just throw him in the finals and expect him to be good no. on that stage. If you can work him in now and do a game and do a blowout, dress him next game, and if it's a blowout again, put him in. Agree. <laughs> Concur. Um, no, look, there are people, I, I think I'm one of them, saying, like, the, the road for the Celtics, while they are a great team. I think I'm one of them. I think I'm one of them. Uh, has also you, been paved a little bit. You've been shitting on them all I know. year. Well, I still have the West winning. But how, the Halliburton hamstring thing, you're like, you have got to be kidding me. Yeah, I mean, this is the same hamstring he hurt in January, missed 10 games with, and they don't know how severe it is. Mm. He, he dealt with it at halftime. He got treatment on it, tried to come back, play through it in the third quarter. Then obviously it just didn't ramp up, rev up in time, and he ends up missing the rest of the game. They're going to have tests today, see exactly how bad it is, but hamstrings are hamstrings. Yeah, they're, Those are, they they're not just throwing a shack patch on a hamstring and throwing it back out there. <laughs> Does that like, feel good? Yeah, like this is, <laughs> this is going to linger. I would be, hamstrings. honestly, the way he was walking up, I'd be surprised if he plays game three. It's OG and an OB. Like, it's a shack patch. What I mean? You know, like the, the icy ice hot, oh, the icy oh, hot, oh, sore neck, uh, put yeah, it on. Yeah. Like, it's, uh, <laughs> they can't do that. If it was it's not only... varsity blues where they're just going to shoot him up either. Like, this is an injury that's going to linger. It's not just going to heal in the next 48 hours. Yeah, you can't shoot up a hamstring. You can. can. No. can like it's, okay, no, no, I've no. done with you. No. I don't know how productive that is, the playing. I mean, it's Dude, it works. <laughs> the worst. I'm just kidding. But he's not, I, don't, I can't see him playing game three, which is just devastating. For it Indiana. sucks for everyone. This whole thing, these injuries are it's too much. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, a gentleman that both of these young men are very familiar with. You found Marcus your cool Morris corner. Joins I see. The Team Poe! <laughs> you guys are going to fight. <laughs> I'll fight for Marcus Morris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, run it up, run it back. Run it. Big shot, Marcus. Where my dog's at? Ooh, ball, ball, all of my dog. Ball to the dead. Marcus Morris, he is a competitor. Mr. Greco, I'll come at your name. Come at your job. 13 years in the league, played for the Sixers and the Cavs this season. Marcus Morris joins the show. I know, the vi videos are the best part. It, gets, it goes down. <laughs> yeah, that was smooth. That was smooth. <laughs> Let's go. That must be nice to see smooth. yourself doing those things. Um, all right, we got to talk about your brother because he's, he's playing for the Mavs right now, and he's got oh, a yeah. ring already. And if he gets his second before you get your first, what does that do to the dynamic of the brotherhood? Uh, to be honest, it just means we both got one. I just take one of his, and uh, <laughs> just to bond him. Easy so fix. So we straight. So we straight. He make it real easy for both of us. We straight. <laughs> that seems I like, like that. a good plan. It's Lou. you, sir. No, we got one question. All right, cool. I'm gonna kill somebody, Marcus. Hey, gonna go. kill somebody. Hey, Star, you've uh, obviously your brother is on on Dallas, and you and I know we've had some battles with Luca. We've had some battles with 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 Dallas. You yeah. especially, though, for whatever reason, Luke, you was always <laughs> on his head. What was it about Luca that just pissed you off? Like, <laughs> oh my goodness! You I mean, that what? is a flop. That, that's a lot of flop, though, to be honest with you. Look at you. Boban. Hey, the hell does it hey, say hey, on the hey, back hey. of his jersey? Hey, you know what, man? Luke is a shit talking, a shit talking <laughs> guy, man. So, you know, he uh, like a competitor, man. Like, it, it was always fun. You know, one thing that uh, I can say is that, like. He was relentless, and you know, I mean, he always he always gave me a challenge. So it was fun, man. It was it was, it was no hard feelings. I was like, you know, every time I was putting him down, I was you know, I mean, coming right back to him, and he was coming back. So uh, it was all fun, man. It was all fun. That's a does great Keith one. actually hit you up though and be like, yo, he's actually kind of a cool, solid dude, or like, or like all the time? He does, yeah, all the time. Keith Keith liked him a lot, man. He says, you know, 
they built a really good relationship in this two years in Dallas. So uh, I know I know that they actually like really talk basketball, and I know he actually helped Luke on the court and just being there helping him see the game a little bit more. Uh, so Mook, I know you and Lou played a few seasons together, including the bubble season yes, with the Clippers. Uh, we know a few of those stories that happen in the bubble, uh, particularly with Lou. Uh, I got any, PTSD still. Any notable <laughs> moments for you? Any notable stories you have from that season or playing with Lou, especially in the, in the bubble oh, season? Man, shit. Bubble. Oh, man. There was a lot of stuff going down <laughs> in like the bubble. It was a weird out. time. <laughs> it was a weird time. It seemed like it happened so fast. It, like, came and went. But uh, I could say the one thing that happened with me is the day we lost, I left every single item in the hotel room and just <laughs> left out that motherfucker. I just, I just couldn't stay there no longer. God damn. I literally, Ooh. like... Like some good stuff? Like a watch or anything? Every... Like, I, I, no, 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 okay, no okay. watches. Like, no, no watches. Watch. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like, you it's everything, we man. We moved into the hotel room, so we had food, we had microwaves, water, we had microwaves food, and stoves. Uh, and, refrigerators, yeah. everything. Like, just, just got up and we left that shit. shit. I was, just, I was gone. I was like, man, you can have this shit. How is this not a documentary with all this? By the like way, I retired. I know. <laughs> I, re I retired. I'm from that shithole. <laughs> yeah, that shit. Man, Look, crazy that's... experience. I had a good time, though. I got to say, I know Lou's talked a little bit about it. Do you feel like you guys win a championship if you weren't in the bubble that season? For sure. Hands down. Hands down, we was the best team. We was the most connected team, uh, top to bottom. Um, started to the guys coming off. We was just like, it was perfect, man. I think that the bubble just, I think guys just got tired of being there, man. Tired of being not around their family, just being in a comfortable space, and you know it just affected us right when we right when we had our shot. Lou, please do the documentary, please. I, I am begging you. This will be one of the best <laughs> documentaries of all time. Um, you've got people that can tell you good stories. So the one of the moments is it's it's on the internet, lives forever. Is the uh, the Kawhi messing bunny ears thing, and he does the death stare. And I I show that first to say, <laughs> a is that the dude to mess with? But more importantly, we continue to be told, Marcus, and lose one of the guys, that he's funny. But we never get to see it. So please, <laughs> in light. <laughs> <laughs> look, kind of a smirk. if you really pay it's attention, kind of he's smirk. smart. He's looking a cool character, man. Yeah, tell, tell us a good, hey. quiet, funny story. He's, hey, he's man, just... a lot of people got a lot of people got uh, got why confused, man. Why is really a he's funny, a funny dude, kid. man. He talks comedian, a lot. Dog. I love that. I think it's just more so when he's comfortable around you, he kind of like shows his other side. Um, actually, in that in that actual video. I don't even know if he was looking at me right there. He might have been looking away. Look at just from the angle. I think it's like when when uh, Matt Barnes take the ball at Kobe, then we really got the the real view of it, and mm -hmm. it wasn't really faking the ball at him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, I think it was one of those. But you know, Wad's been a good friend of mine, man. Unfortunate, you know, the injuries he's had the past couple of years, man. That dude really, really cares about the game. Um, and yeah, man, that, that 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 bubble season, we definitely we definitely had a shot to winning it. Look, yesterday the Cavs, they fired J.B. Biggerstaff, who we both had yeah. uh, in Houston. That's my guy. But I always, I tell people, I never had him as a head coach. So there's a different dynamic. Yeah. I'm sure as assistant coach, he was my guy. We'd go out. We'd hang. It's probably a different element as a head coach. I know you got there in late March. Was there, was, did you see any, any situations where there was a disconnect in the locker room? Or was it different having him as a head coach, as an assistant coach? You know, it's easier for me to catch it because I came in, like you said, I came in late as shit. It was like half a month for the season into maybe like 12 games or something like that. And uh, honestly, yeah, man, I I, I, I kind of I kind of seen it. I kind of seen it. Sorry to say it. But, you know, guys, you know, he's been around there for a while. I mean, sometimes it's just time is just is 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 a little bit too long. And uh, I think that, he, you know, he had the locker room. I just think that. Uh, I think his time just ran out, man. Good dude, you know, on and off the court. Um, you think they just you know, got tired of his voice? Yeah, is this like an X's I, and O's thing? Is this yeah, like a just bringing a fresh face? Like what? What? Or is this like? I, I a... think it's more so just bringing in a fresh, fresh voice. Uh, you know, but I, I can't really speak on it because they had like other seasons I came in so late, so it was like, I was like, oh shit, when I got here, I was like, man, we, you know, <laughs> shit, we trying to fight for something. It was just more so like. You know, I mean, I, I've been around a long time and, you know, just seeing like the responses and like how players wow. like take feedback, take criticism. I just wasn't, you know, I, I, 
I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I, I, I didn't see it. But, you know, guys play hard. He's still prepared for the right, you know, all the right reasons. And, you know, we, we had our chances. Yeah, and then there's there's all these stories coming out that the guys were mad at Jaron Allen for not playing. With the, was was there yeah. truth to that too? Because I'm like how, I'm looking at Jared Allen from the outside. I'm like, how can you be mad at this guy? How could you not like this? This guy seems yeah, like Jared, the nicest cat in the know, world. No, Jared, he's a, he's a great cat, man. He's a great cat. He's a uh, real quiet, real to himself, very, uh, very professional. Um, I've had uh, I've had a rib contusion before where I've like had a deep bruise, so I understand the pain. Um, I don't think guys are mad at him at all. I think it was just more so, you know, we just wanted him out there because we knew the opportunity we had with, uh, even after beating Orlando, getting through that grueling series and then had an opportunity against Boston without Porzingis. I think if Jared Allen plays, unfortunately he was hurt, I think I think we have a real shot of uh, of taking him to seven and maybe maybe coming out that series. That's what, Yeah, that's what's funny with this coaching that's, thing. It's, yeah. it's like you guys won so many games. You're one of four teams that have a home court advantage the last two years. It's like, in, but you still fire the coach. It's like, damn, there's got to be some sort of yeah, it's, some personality. It's a little, it's a little different, but you know, it's a, uh, it's league, man. And, and guys, he's been there a while. You know, he's been there and he's cleaned it up. Um, uh, just from you know coming in late, I just it was just it definitely was a disconnect somewhere in there. Cause I, cause I heard something too. It was like with the Jared Allen of it all that people were people thought, and I don't know if it was executives or other players, that he wasn't yeah. doing enough to get back on the court. And so my question is, when you guys have an injury, um, are you aware of what an injured teammate is doing or not doing as far as rehab? Are you kind of in that business, or everybody's on yeah. their own and we assume it the most? No, you're you're around. That's why I'm I'm yeah. curious to see what what was going on because you almost forced to rehab. Like, you don't really have an yeah. option to rehab. That's not even like, <laughs> yeah. a, like a thing. So I'll let you speak uh, on that. I think, so. like, like you said, you don't have an option to rehab, but you got an option to play. So gotcha. it's like, you know, I can't, you know, I can't speak on how bad it was for Jared. If you put me in that same position, do I play? Yes. Um, but, you know, I, I can't say how his body felt. Uh, Orlando was a, a very physical, physical ass series. So, uh, I wasn't surprised he didn't come back in that one. Um, a little bit surprised about the Boston one, but not 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 too much about uh, Orlando because they were some physical young cats and he got hit one more time and it could have been different. I think Boston is not as physical, more you know, t- just talented and uh, skillful guys. It also depends on like your role and your. It's, it, what's funny is it depends on your salary. Like I, I was hurt eighty percent of my career and I was making a lot of money to where like that was looked at. Like my teammates, like almost like, all right, why That's is fair. he not playing? Why is he not practicing? So like, there de- exactly. that definitely causes like some animosity when you aren't able to be on the floor and you got guys that aren't making as much money as you practicing, grinding, getting their ankles taped. That definitely makes them feel some type it's of way. It's a vibe, sure. too. It's a vibe. Like, if, he, if, if he's already a quiet dude and he's staying to himself and, he, and you, you walk in there or you walk out of the weight room and, he's, and you sweating and you working hard yeah. and he's sitting there chilling yeah. on his phone or something and he hurt, yeah. that might piss you off, too. I can see, <laughs> you know? see, I was the opposite, though. I was loud as fuck and not playing. So that was, I was, it was almost yeah. worse for me. Hey, really hey, hey one picture. thing I can say about J.A., though, is, like, he showed up, man. Like, when it was time to play, uh, he, he showed up, man. And uh, just for the little time I was there, like, he, he wanted to play. But definitely, Lou, like, he was very quiet. So around that time, he was just, like, like every day, like, ah, is he playing? And it was just, like... Nah, I'm going to sit out. So I was like, ah, okay. <laughs> well, like, can you play? And, he, you know, I, I don't think it was Melissa. I think he really was hurt. I think uh, just his movements, he's a, he's a tall guy, plays, like, above the rim, plays very long. So, I mean, any of that can, like, mm. cause an effect on your ribs to, like, flare up or to hurt or whatever. And on that, and on that same thing, Kawhi. Like, Kawhi dealt with so many injuries, and we would watch him get criticized so much, but we saw him every day be the first person in the gym, yeah. rehab yeah. the entirety of the day, do everything that he can to get back on the floor. Then you go home exactly. and look at the TV. It's like, this dude's always hurt. It's always right. it's always an issue. And, and he was working his ass off to get back on the floor. Also, with an injury, it's like, can it get worse? Is my right. rib right. hurt right. so bad that I can't play? Or is it like a meniscus that could tear again to back like to back set you even a couple more months? So I think there's a difference mm-hmm. there when is he playing through pain or is he just being soft? Yeah. And, um, and that was my point about the Orlando series. Like, yeah. he would have got hit in his rib. Them young cats, they was gone. They was physical. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying, it. a little bit more about that Boston series, not as physical. So, uh, you know. It is what know. it is. It, it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, um, we're, uh, we're at the Donovan Mitchell watch portion of the year. I feel like we kind of do this uh, yeah. in the last few. But do you, do you get the gut feeling 
he is going to stay in Cleveland? I mean, it, I've stopped guessing. I think so. I think Don really liked it there. He could be himself. Uh, he was kind of growing into a leader uh, from what I've seen. Um, fans embrace him really well. You know, Don's quiet. He's, you know, he's a workaholic. He's always in the gym. He's always watching film. And I think I think Cleveland's a really good place for him, man. It's a, it's a great market, uh, great fans always uh, showing out. And uh, I, I would be highly surprised if he left. I would be highly surprised. Start. Highly. <laughs> You play. You play with Brandon Jennings, and uh, he, he recently he recently jumped out there. In some people's opinion, he jumped out there. I don't know. I asked you. You could you could you could answer however you want. He said Malik Monk was better than Donovan Mitchell. Is better right now. Is better than. <laughs> Said. We hey, love Malik BJ, Monk. Don't, BJ, get, me, don't hey, get it wrong. Hey, we hey. love Malik Monk, but I thought this was a hot take. What's your opinion on that? Hey, I, like you said, I like I like Malik Monk too. He's a great player, um, great energy. Donovan's a superstar. Um, he's lacing him up every night. He's playing. I, 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 you know, I haven't watched a lot of Malik Monk, like just personally. But the the past weeks I was there, the couple months I was there with Donovan, he's definitely a uh, top tier guy. Definitely a superstar. I, I don't think it's really a comparison. Um, I don't know where where BJ got that from. And, uh, and that's no that's no knock to Malik Monk. We were just talking like like years and years of. Of, of 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 competing at a high level. I know he's only been in the league a few years, but I mean, shit, he was just all NBA last year. He's averaged 28 points this year. He's 48 percent from the floor. He had 50, damn near a few times in the playoffs where he could have really kept going. And he, he took us to the second round, man. And he don't get hurt. That series look a lot different. Uh, and that's like again, that's no knock to the league. I like, I'm a good fan, a big fan of league monk, good friend, but uh. No, nah, that's not a comparison. I don't know where BJ, he, he must have been. I don't know where it came from. He must have been a little intoxicated. <laughs> Straight up. Look, game five. A little intoxicated. <laughs> game five against the Celtics, man, you got an opportunity to go out there. Y'all were dealing with some injuries, and and you produced at a, at a major clip. You had 25 in, in 34 minutes. Were you a little disappointed that they didn't give you more opportunities after that to continue to do your thing? Hey, Kill, I was very disappointed, man. Uh, you know, the, the, the conversation of me coming to Cleveland, you know, during the regular season, the end of the regular season, just kind of get my foot and I was off for a little bit, but they knew that in the playoffs, that was my time. I prepared, you know, the entire year uh, just for those moments. And, you know, we had injuries, you know, guys wasn't playing as well. I thought for sure I should have got a, a, a great look at it. I thought we needed everybody to play and contribute and we also needed scoring. So uh, I was, I, I was kind of disappointed in that, man, but you know, just staying ready, staying the pro, and just, you know, when my time was called, I, obviously I showed it uh, in Orlando series. I think I was an intricate part of helping winning that series and then being given my chance in games, was that game five, and, just, you know, just doing what I did. Uh, just hopefully it just shows the league that, man, I got a lot left in the tank, and, uh, you know, it's just, you know, opportunity calls, and, you know, I'm always there for it. So – that being said, does you're about to be a free agent. That experience is very fresh yeah. on your mind. When you go into this, do you remember that? If the Cavs come calling and say, we'd like you to stay, how do you keep an open mind during this period? Um, you know, just taking what it is. Uh, I'm going to be representing myself. So just having a conversation as, you know, as a player and understanding, like, where I'm at. This is my, I'm just finishing my 13th season, you know, and just – Knowing that, you know, if it's a younger team, just being a vet, being a guy that still can play because I'm not out here just to talk shit and, and can't back it up. So just being a guy that still can play at a high level um, and if it's a championship team or, you know, a championship aspiring team, uh, just being able to help at that level too. Uh, I'm You know, I'm excited to see, see how I go. I haven't really been a free agent much of my career. So, I mean, at the tell, and it, it, it'll be fun, man. It'll be fun to represent myself and being able to, Talk to other teams and you know just see how it go. When you say that, you mean you're gonna you're gonna be your own agent this uh, this free agency? He ain't giving nobody that four percent. I basically been my own agent, man. <laughs> Save I mean, that four percent. I basically been my own agent. Giving nobody that four yeah. percent. Hey, go hey, hey, go to taxes anyway. So I had to give it. You know, what I mean, I had to do something with it. So, uh, you know, I basically been my own agent for like my, my last, I would say six or seven years. Um, oh, just cool. having somebody on my spec and just you know just telling them what I want to do. I mean, it ain't hard, man. Shit, you put the numbers up. You produce, uh, you go ahead and ask for what you need and what you want. Wait, yeah. hold on, because I'm, I'm obsessed with this, because yeah, we've all paid agents uh, for a long time. So do they call you? Like, you literally get a phone call. It's like, hey, Marcus, this is so-and-so GM. We want to talk. Is that how it works? Yeah, or 
shit, I can call them. I, I don't, you know, I don't <laughs> I mind it. doing that. Like, I don't mind doing that. I, you know, I, I, I look at my game. I look at the fit. I'm not just going to go anywhere where it just doesn't make sense. So, I mean, just, you know, just handling my business, being able to talk and have a conversation. Obviously, you know, I think it's a little bit weird because sometimes they don't want to talk about your age or talk about, you know, money to players. But, I mean, hey, man, I've been around. I've seen a lot. I just don't understand why when I represent myself at this part of my career when I'm no half shit majority of the league majority of the GMs I've been around 13 years I've played on eight teams seven teams whatever it may be uh, I've built a lot of relationships so you know I could just make a phone call and hey, if it don't go the right way then you know it is what it is but I think that uh, at this part of my career it just doesn't make sense to have someone represent or speak for me on my behalf so Mook is there a team that you watch this year well you're like damn I'm gonna give them a call like when I'm gonna come free agency because I know my game better than an agent can that would be a great fit for me uh the team money uh the cap space um everything man you know uh I had I had a, I had a, a big opportunity to be on four rosters here if you can believe that I was on four fucking rosters. Um, <laughs> I only played for two, but I was on four rosters for a minute. And just the first time in my career was bouncing around, like being such a you know established player, it was a little bit different for me. But um, yeah, man, just you know, I like to do my homework. I like sports. I like ball. So you know, I could just go around, look and see where I fit, see who has the, you know the proper the proper money, see where my range at, and uh, you know, just be real with myself and, and just have a real conversation. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, look, Jason Tatum. Uh, you played with him when he was a 19-year-old rookie. Was the writing on the yep. wall, did you know back then that this dude was going to be this guy today? Where they, Did you see something in camp or practice where you're like, damn, this dude's different? Uh, damn, damn. Uh, CP, like, honestly, like, since day one when I first met him, like, he just had that aura about him, he had that attitude about him. And he came in 19, we was playing one-on-one -on -one every fucking day. Like, he literally... Like called me every day to play one on one, and he was you know he was he was doing his thing, man. Like I was winning some, but he was doing his thing. He was talking shit, and I was like, man, this kid, he definitely got it. And uh, I think early on, like you know, you don't want any injuries to happen, but the, the Gordon Hayward injury and the Co uh, the Kyrie injury, I think it helped him propel to the level that he is now because it, it, it exposed him to the Eastern Conference Finals right away, his first year. You know, like things like that for rookies and, and guys like that is like big because now. You have that experience, so now going into the following years, you know what kind of work you need to put in. You know how it feels to be deep, or make a deep run in the playoffs. So um, I think that you know, obviously you don't want to see injuries, but I think that very that that helped him a lot to get to where he you know where he is now. You mentioned Kyrie too. You also played with him for two seasons in Boston. Yeah. <clears throat> What's different now? We see him now happy balling. What's working so well for him in Dallas as opposed to his time in Boston? Hey, I like Dallas to win a chip, too. I'm going to say that now. Uh, when Kyrie's dialed in and he's locked in like that, and you can tell that, you know, Me too, the president Me of the too. team. Mm, I, I love, love it, that. man. The president of the team, I think, bro, over there, I think he's very comfortable. Uh, what, what the league don't want to see is a locked in, dialed in Kyrie Irving. And I say, like, because he's been there a few times. If you look around the playoffs, he's probably the the most seasoned guy there. Um so I, I like that. That's my dark horse. I wouldn't even say a dark horse, man. That's my front runner for for the, for the chip. I think if, if if Dallas get get to the get to the uh, the chip, I think I think they take it home. Am I and crazy? bro over there, so I kind of want him to. So yeah, that that's probably a good reason you might want to throw that in there. <laughs> but 20 minutes ago, and I know Chandler, you love Dallas, but 20 minutes ago, did you not just sit here and say Boston's winning? No, it is going to be Boston. It's going like to be I, I, <laughs> it's going to be Dallas versus Boston. Boston's going to win just, it all. I'm, I need to make sure I'm not. Crazy. I'm talking about the West. I did. Oh, sure, oh sure. my God. Which I called Game knew, One. He bro. took Minnesota. Oh my God. You took bro. Minnesota. <laughs> Stop, bro. Boston's going to win it all. No, I picked the West. Whoever comes out of the West, I, I thought you. Yeah, I you're did. a liar. You're a liar. I'm, I'm picking Boston. I still pick hey, Boston. Hey, hey, you know what? I know what Boston is maybe because we haven't really seen it with Porzingis again. So True. once he comes back, I think that changes a lot. That takes some off of Al Horford. You know, he's playing shit 38 <laughs> minutes a game. Uh, so I think it takes a lot of pressure off of Al and, and getting a fresh Porzingis. I think that that definitely will help him. Uh, I think they get out of this series with with uh, Indiana pretty pretty smoothly. Did that, feel, did that feel good to call me out? Like yeah, yeah, because I just, I'm just i sitting right here. I'm like, I know I heard that 10 minutes ago. Um, you and your brother have played against each other 18 times. I think we're all obsessed with professional yeah. 
athletes that are brothers that have to play against each other. And your numbers are almost identical at That's the same crazy. time, which is insane. What is it like on those game days? <laughs> it's a lot. It is a lot. It's, it's fun. It's very fun, but it's a lot, man. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like the first time all over again. You never, like, you know, you never get used to it because, I mean, it's at the highest level. Uh, just being able to face them and then you know your teammates they act like they never seen them before so they're like damn yo you y'all do everything alike and i'm like bro we've been around for yeah, a while that now kind of crazy you, it's nuts yeah like they, they act like they never seen us play against each other before but i mean it's always fun the competition is always fun uh i always want them to do good no matter how you no know, no matter how the game goes but you know obviously i want to win but you know i'm i'm always rooting for my brother to play well and i think it's you know it's vice versa Look, is it true early on you guys shared a bank account or that was all, that was a myth? You know what? We shared one bank account. <laughs> that don't mean that all the money has to okay, go on okay. one bank account. I, all of it. I was like, thinking that would be like, issues like, this would present, like who spends nah, more nah, money. Really, who... though. It's not It's not really an issue because remember we played on the same team. Mm. So we were in the same house. You know, we were young. It wasn't like a thing where... Neither one of us had kids. It was just more so, hey, man, let's, let's watch this one bank account over here to the side. Let's watch that go to the moon. And then you keep the <laughs> shit over here. You know what I'm saying? We play, we play with that. We play with that over here, but we keep this for a rainy day together. You know what I'm saying? So I think everybody wished they had a twin to even say some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? That's How crazy. many people were sharing a bank account I with another, had, with another man? A, a My wife is a twin that's actually obnoxious. Like, I'm married to both of them. Look, they are, yeah, they no, are, that, that's a real thing. That's oh a real thing. Oh, my God, See? it is insane. It's creepy when you say it, though. Which is um, That's a real thing. Like it's, we, so the conspiracy theory, I'm glad we're talking about this, because the, the other one, Lou, by the way, so I start this by saying Lou doesn't believe the Wilt Chamberlain 100-point game. No, he doesn't that. believe the, the Wilt Chamberlain he, off the court. No, he'd know that. He, he, well. yeah. I, don't, I don't believe it. It's two stats I don't believe. But do you believe that there was a time when Marcus and his brother switched places in, an, in a game atmosphere? Yeah, I wouldn't see why not. Not at Kansas. Too. I wouldn't <laughs> see why not. Pre-Kansas, nah. yes. Pre-Kansas, I believe it. Yeah. No chance Kansas, Kansas to the NBA. Pre-Kansas. For sure, free Kansas for sure. But not sure. ever Never since. in the pros. Never in the pros, Damn. man. I, listen, hey, 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 kill. They ain't paying me. I ain't playing. <laughs> oh, I ain't going. To, but you got to share your bank account, so it doesn't matter <laughs> if you're playing or not. Keith they, is. They, they not. They not paying me though. See, I can't go over there. Yeah, he gets hurt. Man, not, you imagine walking into the locker room barely knowing your teammates. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you. <laughs> hey, this, thing, this, this guy look a little bit thinner. He's moving. He's moving today. God, it would be awesome. Even, even like in school, like, fun, in school growing up, did you like take a test for him ever? Like like things all like normal time. things like that. Wow, all the time, man. We awesome. would switch classes all the time, man. Until we got to college, we we fucking had all the same classes, so we couldn't even. Oh uh, yeah, we couldn't do out. it no more. It was more so we had to both show up at the same time, so barely. That's awesome. I want to know how the in-game yeah. situation happened, like in middle school and high right. school. Like one guy just didn't want to play one game. And if you and played for Keith like... and you played like shit, was he mad? <laughs> was he mad? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you, you know what? You know what it was. It was like uh, actually Keith wasn't even supposed to play in the game, and uh, we went at halftime, and I just was playing like shit. <laughs> And I was just like, bro, you you feel like playing like, you know what I mean? He was a little bit bigger, a little bit more choice. He was like, man, it, it, I go in and then we switch. I gave him my headband, switched out. Actually, we did that shit in, 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 in football, too. We played little league football. And Keith was a little bit heavier, so he could never make weight. And uh, so basically, I had to, like, make the weight and then, like, go outside, put a sweaty-ass bag on, <laughs> and, like, go and... Act like I just didn't do it and do it again. And nobody you know ever noticed. And nobody that you never got never caught. Noticed. That's How incredible. How is that possible? Never got caught. It was, yeah, it was smooth. It was smooth, man. We 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 got a lot of stories. I ain't gonna tell you all of them. We got we got. Uh, uh, so uh, my my conspiracy is, <laughs> I, I'm still a little on the fence about the Wilt 100 point game. We got footage of a lot of different things, but we don't have footage of that. That I looked at the box score. The box score looked crazy. If you watch it, he got like three teammates that had 20 <laughs> points too. That's a lot of points being scored. Check the box score. Do you? Yeah, have, I didn't know that. Yeah, check the box score. Do you have any good NBA conspiracy theories that you think to be true? Mm. Mm, that's a great question. Hey, I'm still gonna stand on the wheel. I, I believe we'll both of the on the hundred on the court and the hundred off the court. the 25k off the court. I believe, bro. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a hundred. Oh, I think. Oh, oh, you're buying the off the court. Really? No chance. I'm buying it. The, the I'm buying it. First of all, that's a whole nother conversation. We do that's that. a lot of math. That's a rabbit, that's a rabbit hole for me. That's another conversation. <laughs>
Lou, come on. I like when you start talking no, about the just, Will stuff. I think mathematically, I think it wasn't wasn't that many teams. He said mathematically. There was, there was no Instagram. <laughs> there, like, he so how does he find all the women? He had to leave the hotel and go find <laughs> these people. It's exhausting. Everywhere. So you telling me every Dude. single place Will went, 10 women a day wanted to hang out with Will? Everywhere? I mean, look, hey, it's, every it's day. Was he paying? Christmas, was he Thanksgiving? Paying? Was he didn't paying have, for it? With no hey, kids? He didn't have to leave. He didn't have to leave the hotel, Lou. Yeah, <laughs> yes, he true. did. We talking about the 70s. We talking about, yes, you do. You got to go outside. There was a Rolodex. There was an Uber. There was a Rolodex. Like, you got to. I love that there's, there was an Instagram. There Where are you out. supposed to find There women? was no <laughs> app that he could just funnel them in. Hey, hey, now, see, it's different now because it was only one will. It's, it's something I, that they never I'm seen before, that. so I, I, they, 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 they come in. Uh, we going they showing up. At. But look, <laughs> the everywhere <laughs> with no children. So <laughs> this pull out game is crazy. No ch- I, I, knew it. I, knew it. I knew somebody was going to take <laughs> it too far. Come on, Beetle, back. Come on, <laughs> hey, come on. I didn't say it. I knew hey, he was going to go too far. Hey, that's what that's they what say, yeah, no children, but... Or he just got snipped when he got drafted. He got snipped. Come on, man. Stop, man. Stop, stop. We need answers, Marcus. And for some reason, we decided you have them. There's no way you want Jimmy's every time. Hey, I'm going with Will. I believe it. There I'm it is. going with Will. I got to take I, And I told Lou this. He know that. I, we talked about this. <laughs> <He multiple will. laughs> you know, the one conspiracy I think is the, 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 the draft. The draft thing. Like, I think I think Wimby was planted to the Spurs. There's no way. That would be my conspiracy. Whatever, I think that man. shit is rigged. There's <laughs> no was way Wimby wasn't going too. to the Spurs. Well, it hey, worked hey, in hey, my I favor. Surprised. I, I wish I could get a, 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 a um, congratulations from the Spurs or apology or something because I, 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 I rescinded my commitment to them a few years ago and, made, and mm-hmm. that made that up getting Wimby. That worked out, yeah. That made yeah. that possible because Marcus, if I went, I, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have done that. Can I <laughs> offer you fan. on behalf yeah. of the San Antonio Spurs organization, who I sometimes work for, and the city of San Antonio, thank you for your service. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's what we do. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm still getting... Hey, they still killing me. I'm like, how y'all killing me? Y'all got Wendy out there. Yeah. I would never, <laughs> ever, 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 ever do that. No. Right. Dude, this has been awesome. Ooh. We appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Stop. Well, no, appreciate you. Dwight Spur. Yes, sir. Appreciate yes, sir. Appreciate it. Spur. <laughs> yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> Run it back, y'all. Run it all. Run it back, y'all. Yeah. It's going to be and, real uh, bricky. It's going to get real petty. Tyrese Halliburton is up first. Okay. Um, Shams, you're not going to... It's going to get impolite, so you might want to cover it. Shams, yours. look away. <laughs> Shams, look away. That is so bad. It's not good. Stink like, first of all, he's got the game tights on. He's got the briefcase with absolutely <laughs> nothing I mean, I love it. the briefcase. He's got nothing Vintage. in it. It's a prop. It's a prop. <laughs> no, it's soaking <laughs> lotion it's in It's a there. prop. It's lotion in there. For what? The after belt. The, I think the game, belt after is the It's his part. toiletry bag. He got a stupid toiletry bag. Hey, Tyree, this is not him. If you wore white pants, it's would it have been a better fit? White nope. pants? You he might just said white pants. pants. But he's wearing white. shorts. Like, let's say you go it, white. What's wrong with looks, a white shirt, white pants, and a black I don't like any of it. It looks like he took a bunch of people's clothes and tried to make an outfit. All right, here we go. He's up again, though. No, absolutely not. Let's walk off this. I'm like, Man, we ain't doing this. We ain't doing this. What is that? That's worse than the first one. Poetry in motion. Oh That's God. worse than the first one. What is that? I hope he's not paying somebody for this. <laughs> Holy shit. He's not paying nobody. He's, he's no paying, way he's someone paying a lot. somebody to put No, he's, okay. he's, he doesn't he's have a personal style, someone, so I can confirm that. that. He's paying someone on salary should never have that. their name out. Come on, man. You know what that looks like? I took a home ec class once, and we had to make a shirt. You know, That's what it looks like. Whoever that person is, they sitting at home like this. I can't believe yeah. you keep Don't paying me to do this. That is horrendous. That's not good. I'm afraid to keep going. Is it all Tyrese Albert? Alexander Walker. Anything but what we yeah, just that's saw. That's fine. Smooth. Yeah, we're we'll taking it. Whip in the back. We'll take the Lambo right. behind it, too. I know. I like that it matches. It's <laughs> yeah. all color coordinated. It's very nice. Yeah, this is I like, I like the jacket. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, Dwight Powell. I'm scared. I don't know what these are before. Uh. It's just not him. I feel like he's trying to do what the, he's trying to do what the kids are doing, and that's not what him. What the kids are doing? I do like the jacket. I wear the jacket. Also, is he a ginger all of a sudden? What's with the red goatee? It's like the filter we had yesterday. The <laughs> it's like hell? everybody has orange hair now. I don't love it. It's, a little, uh, it's not him. But I do love the jacket. Obi little... Toppin, please do something. Yeah, perfect. Smooth. Fine. We'll perfect. Take that. Fine. Solid. Take that. Is that yep. the same jacket Walker just had on? 
No. No, it's his pants. It's I like the pants Alexander Walker had go with that jacket. People don't wear regular clothes anymore. I what don't what has the NBA well, turned into? What are regular clothes? I like an old Washington dude. What has the NBA turned You really turn do. Where are the regular clothes? These what are young reg guys, you mean these young fellas. Because we just wear sweats. Out here wearing parachute jackets. <laughs> you get a call from Jaylen El Salvador. Brown. What is it? <laughs> you're, you're, oh. Yeah. I like Choice. It. Fine. I like That's it. solid. It's fashion. I actually like that. I like how the, the is it bottom a of the is it a three crop pieces? top on top of pieces. like a shirt? I think it's a coordinate with a crop jacket like, on I, top. I, I, if it was all black, I might wear this. All if it's black, all black. Wear. Yeah, I, I don't do a lot of color. That's color to you? I neither, but only because I sweat. <laughs> I like it. Brown. I actually like it. I, I, like wonder, I wonder what the top looks like, the, ma the matching pants. I'm scared. You got to uh, get the scoop on that, show. PJ Washington, no pressure, but please. Uh, okay. It's busy. It's a lot. Uh, no, I don't like the shoes. I don't like the pants. <laughs> I don't. The hoodie was fine with just like some more basic pants. But also, like, what do we don't? I think we just we're out of the game. We you're also old. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. You're not wearing those pants. We, I would wear with like, the security guard at the back. <laughs> like, that's that's doper than that shit. Give me a break. If it's, that's cool, I don't want to be cool. That's well, you're not. So you're good. Um, God. I got a Luka Doncic question. No, we don't have. Do we have? Why it? don't we have you show your fit? You got a little pink no, and blue under there. Our fits are atrocious. Sweats, baby. Oh, time. We got Monday we got a little off. Bit of color today. We got Rajon Rondo on Tuesday. Oh, Everyone. yeah. Oh, Rajon Rondo yeah. on Tuesday. I'm love so Rondo. Prepared. You got the whole weekend We're going to make it a point to make Doe tell us good stories and laugh. I would like a Rondo, Rick Carlisle story. Lou and Rondo got traded for each other. Oh. You high five on the way out. Might be some beef there. I don't know. No, we got a lot Find of history. Not on Tuesday. We'll talk about it. We got a lot of history together. Have a good I holiday. I want to miss that one. <laughs> I got it.